It's called In Flight. A big, hefty guy next to me, an even bigger guy already squeezed into the window seat, big, pleasant fellows, strangers before this three-hour, non-stop domestic flight. But they've been talking away non-stop since before takeoff, talking business, talking sports, China, India, my next seat neighbor might have been from India. Talking Cubs and Red Sox, they both love them both. Google, the Euro, leverage, banks, bailouts, masters of money, it will change the way you think. Great deals and missed opportunities. Exxon, fracking, megabus, Amtrak, breakdowns, lost luggage, and missed connections. A good place to stay in Detroit. Neither Cheez-Its nor Diet Cokes inhibit the juggernaut. So much experience, so many theories, so much friendly advice. The urgent need to tell each other everything they know before the flight is over. The Indian fellow occasionally bumping my left arm in his enthusiasm. Exactly. Absolutely. All they've learned and thought, pouring out, pouring out, yet steering clear of delicate subjects, politics they know better than that, or home, an hour into the flight, my wife has become ex-wife. No names, nothing about movies or television, no mention of any other book, no music, but thoroughly tuned in to each other. Exactly, absolutely, handing over and taking in whatever they can in 195 minutes, like old friends. Except not. As we begin our rough descent, a startling silence fills the cabin. One of them has drifted into sleep. Stretching to look out the window, I can make out farmland, roads, then tractors and cars. Some bumps and the sleeper awakes. But the conversation is over. Shutting down, touching down. Each of us left with our own thoughts of arrival or another departure. Then the busy powering up of phones, the clumsy lowering of overhead bags. Jamming the aisle, eager to get off and on with our lives. No handshakes, no goodbyes, but separated in the crowd and each with a little wave, they call out, Sam, Andy, Andy,